Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'll be showing you how to use the Android app bar, or the toolbar, as some people might call it, at the top. So I've got a completed demo here just to show you what it's going to look like. We're going to go from our main activity into a second activity. And on the second activity, we've already configured a couple buttons at the top. And we're going to see how to put this our own icon and controls up there, as well as get the back button, which is called the actually up button, to get that to work. Now most of this information is coming from the Android docs um, as shown here under training slash app bar on developer.android.com uh, and you can walk through that it gives you most of the information but I figured I'd make a video just to kind of show you the sequence of it and how to put it all together into one working application. Okay, so um, to start with, I've created a new basic project here um, with pretty much nothing in it. So let me just run this and we will see what it's actually going to do for us. Um, I'm going to start using this floating action bar that's provided to us to launch a secondary uh, activity. And there we go. Main active. Oh, no, we're still running the old one. Get rid of that. There we go. And I'll run this. So, in my main, and run. So it's doing fragments, but that's fine. Um, we're going to use this floating action bar to set up a new activity. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to come in here into my code, and I'm going to create a new activity. So I'm going to right click on my project and say new activity. And I'm going to select a basic activity. And I'm going to call this one, I don't know, let's say this is uh, my epic second. Just to give it a name that's recognizable. And the rest is fine. So it's going to sync that. I'm going to go back to my main activity and I'm going to launch it. So inside of my floating action bar here in moncreate, I'm going to launch that. So to launch it, I need to create an intent. Intent i equals new intent. And I need to give it a context. So that's going to be main activity by this. And then the activity, which is my epic.class. So this builds me an, act, an intent. I'm going to launch it with start activity with i. Now, um, if you watch some of my other videos, a really great way to launch activities is to have the activity have a static method that will return you an intent. Uh, here we're not passing any data and I don't want to confuse the matter. So go look for that video, um, which will be a better way to launch uh, and kind of encapsulate launching. So let's try this out. I'm going to get rid of my breakpoint there, shift F10, and we should run this. And now when I click on the button, it should flip us over to the new activity. Woohoo! Okay, so that's the basis. We're up and running. Now let's see if we can add something to that. I don't need my main activity anymore. Um, so my basic activity here doesn't really provide me a lot. It does seem to have this bar at the top already. Let's go look at what actually is in the XML. So if I go under res, uh, res and then layouts, and this is going to be my, uh, so we'll start with the uh, activity here for my epic second. So activity my epic second. Get rid of that. Um, what pulls in the content is this line here. It just includes the other layout file, this content, my epic second. And this adds my floating action bar button. I don't need one, so I'm going to delete it. And this up at the top gives me my app bar at the top. So this is kind of what we're going to be playing with. And it's already provided for us, which is great. We don't have to bother adding all that in. So I'm going to go back to my code here, and I'm going to get rid of the floating action bar because we just deleted it. Got to clean up our code a little bit. So in order to start accessing this, we can see here that it's already kind of set it up for us. It's saying, okay, I want the toolbar to go at the top. So in order to kind of, we're going to have to start to provide a resource as to what goes into this toolbar. The way that we configure the UI, like with a lot of other of our layouts, is through a resource. And so there's already a menu down here. If there isn't a menu folder, you can right click on your resource, say new folder or directory, and then type in menu. But I've already got that, so I'm just going to go into here. I'm going to say new, and I'm going to say new file. I'll just put in all the content myself. I'm going to call this one menu underscore, remember it all has to be lowercase. So I'm going to call this one menu epic second. Not good enough. And then I can give it a new, oh, I need to give it a type. I'm going to try that again. Dot XML. That's going to be much better. So into here, I'm going to put in um, the contents. Now it happens that you can pull it from in here under set up the action bar. 
And down here, they'll give you some sample code. Let's just take the actually, this is, we did that already. Let's go to the next one, handle actions. And from here, I'm just going to take their sample code as a starting point. Turns out not to be quite what we need, but we'll get there. So put that in there. It doesn't know about a few things. First off, it doesn't know about app. So I can do that Alt, Enter, Autocomplete, and it puts in this here for the tool to understand what's going on. Um, now, two more things here. I'm just going to hard code the string. Um, you can switch the string to XML. We'll do that in a minute, maybe. And let's, I don't know, let's put up something just like uh, run fast. So this is some action that we're going to add. I'm going to call it the run fast action, whatever that means to me. And then down here, uh, this is settings. Let's just put in sort of uh, do the awesome stuff. That's good enough. I'm going to rename these IDs here from action settings to do awesome. And this one instead of favorites, let's put this one and call it, I don't know, run fast. Now we can see here that it's trying to use this, I, this resource, which I, of course I don't have. This is going to be the icon that gets shown when I'm displaying it here on the, to on the app bar at the top. So I could import my own manually and so forth. It turns out there's a really great way to pull in things from the um, Android, um, or the, yeah, Google's, what is it, the material um, uh, UI stuff. So what I can do is I can right click on resource and I can go down to new and then select vector asset. So right click on resource, new vector asset. And then from here, I just want to make sure I'm on clip hired. And then you can click on this magic button here. It doesn't look like a button, but it is. You click it and all of a sudden it loads up all of the stuff you've got. So you can just find something like maybe you're trying to find one for sleep. Well, there isn't one for sleep. Uh, off. Here's a bunch of off icons. We're just going to do, I did run. So let's see if there's anything for run. Oh, here's a run. We'll take it. And the defaults are going to be fine for me. Color's okay. That's great. And I'll click finish. Now I've got this new resource in here. I don't want this old reference here. I'm going to hit control space. And here's the ones that my project knows about. I brought in this thing. I think it was the baseline run. 24. That's what we wanted. Okay, so now I've got a menu. If I run, nothing's going to happen. I've just kind of configured this menu and it's not yet doing anything for me. So what I need to do is I need to tell my um, activity that it needs to show this menu. So let's go back into my activity and let's clean this up a little bit. I need to add override. In fact, I can just go alt insert and I'm going to say I want to override things here and I want to override the, and I'm just going to start typing on create options. There it is, on create options menu. And that's what it's going to default to. Um, now, instead of using the kind of running from the super, I'm just going to, um, so I'm going to inflate, inflate the menu. And to do that, I need to tell it, what, so I need to say get menu inflator, oops, inflator, get the menu inflator. And once I've got the menu inflator, I'm going to call inflate on it, and we can see it takes two arguments. The first one is the ID of the menu to inflate, and so that's going to be r dot menu and in this case dot I want my epic second that was the menu I created so remember that was that file we just edited a moment ago this XML file is my menu oh and here it shows me the icon on the left which is kind of cool um, and then the second argument is the menu I'm hitting control P to get it to display the parameters that I need and so that's just my menu option here all right and then I don't need to do this anymore I'm just going to return true because it returns a boolean. So now I've inflated my menu. Let me run this. Shift F10. And when it runs, we'll switch to the activity. And there we have it. I got my button. Now, it doesn't do anything yet. I can do this and I can see my do awesome stuff. So I can display the menu, but now I need to actually handle what's going on. So in order to handle it, I'm going back into my activity class. And I'm going to override the next one. I'm going to say override, and this is going to be the on options. Uh, let me get this right. On options item selected. On option item selected. So click on that, double click that, and it gives me the code. Now, in here, I need to handle the action coming in. And so I'm going to say, I'm going to switch, generally we use a switch because we have a lot of these often, item, and I want to get the um, ID because then I can switch on the ID. Get item ID. Get the item ID. This will let me switch on it. 
And here I can say case and then whatever item IDs I want to catch. So this, I have to know this is going to be r.id dot and this thing is action. And we're doing the run one. So these are all the ones we had. Uh, run fast. I know this action run fast because I said it was. Here it is. Action run fast. The plus here says create a new ID and we're going to call it action run fast. Could have called it anything I like. Convention is all the lowercase. Okay, so I'm going to do that. For, we'll handle mine in just a minute. And then I'm going to put in a default as well. And this is just going to run the super, which is what is exactly down here. Put that in here. So if I'm, it's not something I'm handling, I'm going to pass it on up to the next level. Um, and it has to handle a have a return value in here somewhere. Uh, right. So I'm going to say return true. True meaning I handled it. And so here I can do anything I like. So let's just put up a toast. So toast toast that'll do uh, dot and then make action this is going to be in this. this is who I want text is going to be like now running and short looks good let's try it out gonna run it coming into here click on the run and there we go now running Woo! looking good okay so the last thing I want to show is how do we get that little back arrow up here that kind of navigates you back? That's actually called up. And so if I go into the docs here, I'll show you the docs, add an up action. It's a little bit strange. So you can read through the docs here. I'm going to demo it now. And in order to add the up, I don't have to add anything to my menu. What I'm going to do is add it to the code here. So I'm going to say uh, enable up on toolbar. And so to do this, I need to first off access the toolbar in a slightly different way. I don't want to be accessing it as a toolbar. I need it to be the app bar. So action bar rather. Action bar a b equals get support action bar. There we go. And then on the action bar, I just say set display home as up enabled. True. And so that will now, when I run it, give me the up button. However, what happens when I click on it? Nothing. Now there's two ways that you can actually make this up bu back button work. Uh, I'll show you the sort of the classic way and then we'll do a custom control as well. So the normal way that you do this is you actually have to register for this activity. What is its parent activity? And when you click the up button, it takes you to the parent, which is slightly different than taking you back on the, on the, um, on the, the was it the call stack the activity stack so it actually kind of it basically destroys previous activities on the activity stack all the way up until its parent and then relaunches the parent so it's a slightly different way of actually launching but let's see what that's going to look like to do that i need to go into the manifest and so here is the epic second that i've got here and i'm going to add in another property so another property along with all these other androidy things so i can say android colon and then i need to put in the name of that was going to be right parent parent activity name. I'll hit enter and I can specify this and I've got the options here. It's already filled it in for me. I want it to be the main activity. Let's say I'm kind of encoding my navigation with that. It's kind of strange to do that in the, uh, the manifest. There are other ways to do navigation that Android's brought in recently. Um, we're just going to leave that into the simple way to start with. Okay, so now I've just done that. That's all I've changed. I'm going to rerun. Now the activity knows its parent. And so when I click the up button, the built-in code for the um, inside the Android framework will relaunch my parent. So that's quite nice. Now I can go back and it's in this case it looks identical to using the back button. It functions slightly differently. This doesn't get reloaded necessarily when you use the back button but it does get restarted when you use uh, the up button. Now the one last thing I want to handle is what do you do if you wanted to do something custom on this back button on the up button here. Um, if you didn't want it to always go to the same place, for example. So what I could do is instead of putting it inside of this, inside of my manifest, I could go into my code and I can handle it explicitly as one of these. Now a little digging around, I looked up what the action ID was, so I actually printed this out or I debugged it and put a breakpoint. And then when I clicked the button, I figured out what the action ID was. The ID then led me to a Google search to show me what the name of the thing was. And it happens to be, it's defined in the Android's R file. 
So not my R file, but built into Android is the R. And so Android.rd. Android.r.id. And then here it's going to be the home, ID home. And now I'm going to intercept that home button. And I can do anything I like. Um, so let's actually put out, let's do this. I'm going to copy and paste this so I can put out a, test, a te little message. Yep, going up. And do what I want. In order to close the activity, I can normally do a finish. And this will use the activity stack, the activity call stack. Return true that I'm handling it. So let me run this. And so now it's going to skip over that information in the manifest. It's going to intercept it directly. My code intercepted it. Yep, going up. And I called finish in order to go backwards. So if I wanted to handle that manually, I now have manual control over that. Okay, so what do we see? We saw that we can use the up button. We put this in our Java code. We actually configured the whole menu in our XML code, and we can put this stuff here. I'll quickly show how do we get these things to appear on the right versus an icon. If I go back to my um, XML file, we give it a hint here. So show as, currently I've got this one run fast as if room. Maybe I want that always to be there. Maybe it's critical, so I can switch that to always. And then down here, I'll hit control space. These are the options that we've got. Um, if room, basically show if you can, otherwise, let me put that to if room. I'm gonna run this again. And now, as long as there's space up here, it will show me the name. And I don't think there's gonna be space. No, nope, didn't show anything yet. There wasn't space because my name was pretty long, do the awesome stuff, but it would show it here if there was a room for me. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. That shows us how to use the activity bar to put up our own controls.